people and a stronghold of salvation to his anointed one. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and grant both these thy laws in our hearts to beseech thee.
prepare for them that love thee such good things as pass man's understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward thee, that we, loving thee above all things, may obtain thy promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Wrong book. Wrong book. Wrong book. Wrong book. book. <laughs> it's our first matins today. We haven't done it for so many months. Everybody forgot. You all forgot. Okay. Not that we have anything that? against Just the Holy Bible. The epistle is written in the sixth chapter. No, that's, not, that's right. Trinity, yes, okay. Sorry. The epistle is written in the sixth chapter of the epistle of blessed Paul the Apostle to the Romans, beginning at the third verse. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him by baptism and death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have planted with him in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old Adam was crucified with him, that our sinful self might be destroyed, that we should never again be the slaves of sin, for he who has died is free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death have no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lived, he lived unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ended the epistle. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, St. Luke. 
beginning at the 27th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, Love your enemies, do good to them that which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and unto him that besmirts, that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other, and him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those who love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Mm -hmm. This sixth Sunday after Trinity, special welcome to our visitors this morning. Please join us downstairs for fellowship and refreshments. We're now back to having coffee hour and cake and sandwiches, and we can join those pandemic pounds, so there we are. It's good to have everybody back. It's good to be singing again. The Holy Mysteries are offered to the honor and glory of Almighty God. In prayer for God's grace to walk the straight and narrow way that leads to righteousness of life and eternal salvation in Jesus Christ. 
In our secular prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Canada East, for their Bishop Ordinary, Bishop Craig Botterill, his clergy and people. We pray too for the traditional Anglican Church province of Africa, as they continue to mourn the deaths of Bishop Makiamba and their Chancellor Paul Duplessis, who was a judge of the court there, as well as the unfortunate growing deaths and infection rates from the COVID-19 pandemic. The Holy Eucharist will be celebrated this week on Thursday at 10 a.m. and the Bible study will continue on Thursday at 10.45. We remember in our prayers today the sick, the sorrowful, the suffering, the dying, Commending to God's mercy and care, Audrey Wilson, Sonia Archibald, Sandra Oz, Bob Leask, Bishop Ruben Rodriguez, Faye Botterill, Colin Rich, Kelly Quinn, Judy Summerhays, Dave Frost, Tillman Gotting, Jenny, Jacqueline Bazet, Maria Ducarm, D. Walmsley, for those dealing with mobility issues and other health concerns, for all who have desired our prayers, unworthy as we are. We pray for those affected by the wildfires across British Columbia, especially the people of Lytton hit so hard. Remembering too in our prayers, the firefighters and support workers battling those wildfires, that God may watch over them and protect them. We continue our prayers for the men and women of Her Majesty's Canadian Forces serving at home and abroad, for the men and women who serve as police officers and first responders across our land, and for the doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals caring for the sick praying God's blessing and protection upon them and their families. Finally, of your charity, I bid your prayers to the souls of the faithful departed, remembering especially Jim Corr, priest, Mary Ridewood, Ryan Fott, Manuel de Soto, and all whose years bind occurs at this time. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. I received this letter from the mayor of Saanich this week. Most Reverend Archbishop, I hope this letter rise to find you well and survive in the heat dome of these past days. The purpose of my letter is to send you a sincere personal thank you and best wishes from my office for all that you and the members of your congregation have been doing to help with the spiritual, mental, and physical wellness in our community. For many reasons, our district of Saanich is a truly remarkable, diverse, and wonderful place to live. Meanwhile, the past 15 months of the COVID-19 pandemic have brought many difficulties for so many residents across our municipality. With the COVID-19 health and safety restrictions about to be lifted, I am sure we are all looking forward to the time when people can finally gather together and return to their normal lives. And moving forward into the months of July and August and beyond, I wish you every health and success Kind regards, Fred Haynes, Mayor of Senate. <coughs> so that was a very kind, and, and, uh, and I will be responding to him on behalf of the congregation. So we have at least one civic leader acknowledging the importance of church, the importance of faith, and all that we do within the community. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As we listen to the words of Jesus in our gospel today, they are in many ways a direct contradiction of our all too human reactions to people and events. As we have witnessed of late in the news across various communities, human reactions of revenge, hatred, division, denigration, all too often come to the forefront. Human interaction becomes human confrontation. Rather than promoting healing, reconciliation, and the building up of community, our reactions can lead to further anger, hurt, frustration, and sometimes violence. We become isolated in our own little worlds, our own spheres of like-mindedness. We shut others out. We hear only the echo of our own voices. But in the words of Jesus, we find the way of peace. We find a way forward which promises and promotes social harmony and well-being. The key to our Lord's message set out in our gospel today is found in his rhetorical question, if you love those who love you, what thanks have you? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what thanks have you? 
for sinners do the same. Jesus calls us, sinners as we are, to redemption. He calls us as his disciples to righteousness. He calls us all out of our narrow, like-minded worlds to be go beyond self-centered aims or desires. Jesus calls each of us to a way of life which embraces not only the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but to a life lived with Christ's love and care. Our Lord's call is a call to be go beyond the civic religion, to go beyond contemporary virtue signaling. It is a call to recognize our fallen humanity while seeking the way of redemption, a call from hatred, a call away from hatred, from division, destruction, self-absorption, to the way which is Jesus, to the life and witness of a faithful Christian involved in this world, but never of this world. Jesus often taught the interpretation of the Old Testament, the correct interpretation of the Old Testament. And in that, he talked about the Old Testament, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And he rejected that. Instead, he tells his disciples, love your enemies. Do good to those that hate you. Bless those that curse you and speak ill of you. Pray for those who abuse and misuse and malign you. To those who hurt you, do not seek to hurt them back. Give to everyone in need who asks, and where one takes from you, do not take in return. Love even those who hate you. Do not tire of doing good or of being generous. Lend your goods, your time and money without expecting any gain or interest in return. Jesus said, if you do all of this, your reward will be great and you will indeed be the child of God. Be merciful, be loving and kind, even as your Father in heaven is also merciful, loving and kind. Well, Jesus does not call us to be doormats or to allow others to trod roughshod over us at their will. Neither does he call us to follow the ways of the world, to take up the old Adam again. Revenge, retaliation, seeking out pound of flesh, my way or the highway, these are not the ways of Christ. They are not the ways of a Christian. In the place of revenge, Christ calls us to righteousness. In the place of retaliation, Christ calls us to forbearance. In the place of self-will, Christ calls us to self-sacrifice. And in the place of hatred and division, Jesus calls us to love and healing. Respect, consideration, understanding, forbearance, forgiveness. These coupled with kindness and love are the true attributes of Christian living. These are the ways of righteousness. They are the ways of the kingdom of God. They are also the blueprint and moral guide for a peaceful, enduring, civil society. Yet as we seek to live out our Christian calling in the midst of the world, we need to add the two attributes of discernment and judgment. <clears throat> Discerning the will of God is all important if we are to walk the way of Christ. Discernment comes through prayer. It comes upon reflecting on the word of God. It comes from actively engaging in the precepts of the gospel, aligning our lives to that of Christ's teachings. With the attribute of discernment comes also judgment. Judgment in the sense of being discriminating in our response to the times and circumstances of our lives. We need to be able to discriminate, to judge between our instinctive and sometimes sinful reactions to events and people and situations with those responses and reactions that come from being a disciple of Jesus. In our gospel for this Sunday, we have a message aimed wholly at ourselves as Christians in the world today. 
a message directed at our responses to the events and circumstances of our lives and in the world around us. We are given a choice to respond either in the way of a fallen, divided world or to respond in the way of Christ. In the face of injustice, of wrongdoing, acts of violence and destruction, we may choose to lash out in anger and vengeance, in judgment and condemnation, or we may follow the example and teachings of Jesus. The choice is ours, and so are the consequences. More than ever, as Christians today, we need to practice what we profess, live out our Christian faith in the reality of our daily lives amidst the encounters of day-to-day -day living. Ours must be an authentic witness, lived with humility and love and faith, born of our love and faith in Christ. That is our lifelong responsibility. It is our Christian calling, our bounden duty and service, and all for the love of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. <clears throat>
Brethren, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. Lord, receive the sacrifice of thy hands, praise and glory in his name, both for our and that of all his holy Amen. We beseech thee, O Lord, to have compassion on our prayers, and graciously to accept the oblations of thy servants, that those things which each have offered to the honor of thy name be profitable unto all for their salvation. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to me, thine unworthy servant, and those bishops in communion with me, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them, who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, chief through the glorious and most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, and all thy saints, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort. And make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, 
Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things, whom with thy co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit we confess as one God, in trinity of persons and in unity of substance. For that which we believe of thy glory, O Father, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Jesus Christ to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant 
that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Let us pray, as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. By the help of thine and God, merciful, be free from sins and save from all distress. The same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, Son of God, by the will of the Father, and from the extent of the life and the world, deliver me by this time, and say goodbye, and love him on my feet for me, and will leave unto thy commandments, and suffer and never separate me from thee. That the partaking of thy body and blood of Lord Jesus Christ, which I have really deserved to receive, come not to my judgment of the Father. But other than the only thing in the protection of the soul and body, and the man's body, and the point of the world of the Lord. I receive the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserved thy body and soul, and God. 
was given to preserve my body and soul. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. 
Let us pray. O Lord, who has satisfied us with thy heavenly bounty, grant that we may be cleansed from all our secret faults and delivered from all the crafts and assaults of our enemies. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth forevermore. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who hath made heaven and earth. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen.